Hi everyone, I'm Victoria and thank you so much for joining me in today's video about Myrtle and Sergio Brown. We're going to be talking about the tragic murder of Myrtle Brown and what appeared to be the disappearance of her son Sergio Brown who has now resurfaced. This situation is being widely reported on because Sergio Brown used to be an NFL player. He played safety and started his career in 2010 when he signed on to the New England Patriots as an undrafted free agent. During his time in the NFL, he also played for the Indianapolis Colts, the Buffalo Bills, and the Jacksonville Jaguars, and he concluded his career in 2016. In all honesty, though, I think that this case eventually would have gotten a lot of attention, even if Sergio hadn't played in the NFL. It has a lot going on, some twists and turns, and Sergio's minor celebrity is just kind of pushing it over the top in terms of notoriety. But this case isn't just about Sergio. It's also about his mother, Myrtle Brown, who everyone has described as an amazing woman. She was always well-dressed, and though she was soft-spoken, she was still very outgoing. Which is why when family members hadn't been able to get a hold of Myrtle or Sergio in several days, they decided to call the Maywood Police Department to report them both missing. Police took this missing persons report for the two adults, and they, along with family members, went to the home in Maywood, Illinois. They went the very same day the two had been reported missing, Saturday, September 16, 2023. Police, family members, and neighbors took part in this search, which they set up in the immediate area and it didn't take long for them to find the body of Myrtle Brown. She was lying dead in a creek bed less than 100 yards from her home. Though they did find Myrtle during this search, they didn't find Sergio or any sign of him. Myrtle's body was taken in for autopsy and the Cook County Medical Examiner's Office ruled her death as a homicide. They had found that she died due to multiple injuries caused by an assault. Over the next few days, family and friends would mourn the passing of the beautiful Myrtle. Her other son, Nick Brown, posted this to his Facebook page. It's a sad but hopeful time, and we will all get through this together. Mom always told me, tough times don't last. And our last conversation about tough times being temporary is my beacon of hope. Mom, thank you for being strong, caring, diligent, fancy, funny, and for saving my art. I won't let you down. My brother Sergio is still missing. If anyone knows where he is, I want him to know that I love him and please come home. Which brings us to Tuesday, September 19th, when an Instagram account called INT Player with a Passport posted an Instagram story that caught many people's attention. Fake news, fake news. It has to be the... FBI, they came into my house on Bob Marley's death day with a 511 agent gas, unwarranted. They kidnapped me twice from home, the Maywood Police Department, right? Chris Foucault did it twice. Aaron Peppers was there the second time that it happened. It had to be the FBI or the Maywood Police. I thought mom, mama was on vacation in Sinaloa. That's fake news. Get the my goddamn face. She retired. And you want to come to me? The, the Maywood police got to give me money. FBI had to do it. They got the power to do some like that. What the f is going on? That's fake news. Don't come with me. Reportedly, this account is considered to be a burner account being used by Sergio rather than his main Instagram account. Police have also identified that it appears he may be in Mexico. That same Tuesday, he posted another Instagram story. I got it. There it is. It's P. Sherman, 42, Wallaby Way, Sydney. Oh my gosh. I can't. Just keep swimming. Just keep swimming. What the f Missing? They ain't never seen finding Nemo. What the f is going on? This is traumatic. Lucky I know how to say a joke. You. What the f Just keep swimming. Police are aware of this account and they're working to verify that the account is Sergio's and they've managed to identify an area in Mexico that they believe him to be. I think it's pretty obvious watching these videos that something just doesn't seem right with Sergio. I don't want to label what he's acting like, but it's not normal. He either seems to be in denial or delusional or just straight up lying. But whatever's happening, this isn't normal behavior for someone who would have just lost their mother.
Sergio is believed to have posted a third Instagram story as well, this time showing himself walking around in Maywood, Illinois, shirtless. He tagged Maywood, Illinois as well. Oh my God, oh my God, if I die, I'm a legend. It's too late for my city. I'm the youngest. Well, 13 News tracked those lyrics to a 2017 as a Drake song. What's unclear, though, is when he would have shot this video. There's a very good chance that this is an old video that he's decided to now post. In his second video that he posted, he tagged the Sydney Opera House, and he wasn't in Sydney, Australia. So it seems that police and most people believe that he tagged Maywood, Illinois, even though he is still in Mexico. Police have also stated that Sergio has not currently been declared a suspect in the murder of Myrtle. I believe he's still just considered a missing person because even though he's allegedly posted these Instagram stories, no actual investigator has laid eyes on him and seen, you know, physically in person that he's okay. And I did want to make that clear that he has not been declared a suspect yet before we move into talking about what a neighbor has shared with the public. And I just gotta say, I love chatty neighbors whenever I'm looking into things like this. The little bit of insight we've gotten into what may have happened and into the movement and dynamic of this family comes from a neighbor, Carlos Cortez. He's talked to several media outlets and shared some of what may have happened. Carlos shared that the family told him that Sergio was allegedly acting, quote, out of his mind, unquote, for the last few months. He had no more information about what behavior Sergio had been displaying to make the family feel that way. Although I think we can see some of that kind of out of his mind behavior in those Instagram videos that I just showed you. Carlos also shared that he handed over ring doorbell footage to the police that I think will prove to be a big part of this case down the road. He alleges that in this video, you can see Sergio leaving his mother's house with what appears to be trash. Sergio goes and starts a bonfire, and then Carlos alleges that you can see Sergio burning his mother's clothes in that bonfire. His exact statement was that Sergio, quote, burned all her clothes, unquote. Police have not confirmed that this is what the video shows, but reportedly family members have agreed in the media that this is something of what's seen on that video. Overall, this seems to be shaping up to look as though Sergio may be involved with his mother's death which would just honestly be heartbreaking for their whole family. It's bad enough to have lost their mom and then have the fear that their brother and nephew were missing for a while, but now they're dealing with the fact that he could be involved somehow, and that is just honestly tragic. One thing that I wondered about from the beginning when I started seeing that people were reporting that Sergio was an ex-NFL player was if the discussion surrounding head trauma and football was going to come into play. And I've already seen a few articles discussing if this whole concussion football thing could end up being the explanation for what happened. CTE has become a common defense and explanation for violent acts in mainly football players. CTE stands for chronic traumatic encephalopathy and really came into mainstream discussion following the crimes and death of Aaron Hernandez. And I do think that we're seeing more and more studies and more and more results of CTE being a major problem among football players, whether they move on to violent acts following their careers or during their careers, or they end up with early dementia, very many cognitive issues. There are so many things that happen. I would not be surprised if as this investigation continues and depending on what happens in the future, the discussion of CTE in Sergio Brown comes up more and more. Now, I do want to add that Carlos had very kind things to say about Myrtle. He's quoted as saying, Myrtle, she was an outstanding woman and I'm hoping she is in the right place and she's with God. Myrtle's other son, Nick, and her sister, Sheila Simmons, as well as the rest of their family are shocked and heartbroken. And my heart and thoughts go out to them in this time. I can't even imagine what they're going through. And I hope that all of this will be resolved relatively quickly for their sakes. Police are asking that anyone with possible information call the Maywood Police Department. You can call Dennis Diaz with the Maywood Police at 708 
368-468-4131. Or you can submit an anonymous tip at 708-450-1787. And I do want to also point out that police are aware of the INT player with a passport Instagram account. So at this time, I don't think they're looking for more tips on that Instagram account specifically. Um, but obviously, if you see something else, if you see other clues about Sergio or where he may be, those would be the type of things to call in. Overall, I think this is just a very tragic situation that we're going to see become more tragic as information comes out. The family and neighbors of Myrtle had nothing but glowing things to say about her. She really did seem like an amazing woman who was taken from this world much too soon and definitely still had life left to live with her loved ones. As the investigation goes forward, I hope the truth, whatever that may be, is found out and that Myrtle and her family get the justice they deserve. I'm filming this video on September 24th, 2023, and I will be sure to update you if anything comes up after this date. If you think there's been an update or you want to check for one and you don't see a new video, you can always check a pinned comment down below. If there is one, it'll have an update. If there isn't, then there isn't any sort of update yet. Or I'm just not aware of an update yet, in which case, please feel free to comment that down below because that can be super helpful for me. And that's all I have for you for now. So thank you so much for watching. Stay safe and I'll see you next time. Bye.